dear friends in the previous video we were discussing the parts features and decided determination of humerus and in this video let's talk about the attachments and applied aspects of humerus bone what are the various muscles attached to the humerus bone and the clinical anatomy of humerus bone okay so see the first diagram this is the anterior view of humerus bone as all of us know it is the anterior view of right humerus fine okay already we know the various bony parts of the humerus okay so and i hope you will be knowing the blue color in this diagram represents the insertion of the various muscles and red color will be indicating the origin of various muscles okay so when i say attachment that refers to origin as well as insertion of various muscles okay you know this is the greater tubercle of humerus and this is the lesser tubercle of humerus okay so what are the three muscles which are attached or inserted into the greater tubercle of humerus so this whole area is called as greater tubercle this is actually the posterior view of right humerus posterior view of scapula as well as right humerus okay so the greater tubercle okay it has three impressions from above downwards what are the three impressions present on the greater tubercle yes upper impression middle impression and lower impression you can see them isn't it the three impressions upper middle and lower impressions okay and they will give insertion to three muscles which can be remembered by the mnemonic sit sit muscles okay the three impressions they give insertion to three muscles can be remembered as sit muscles supraspinatus yes infraspinatus and teres minor teres minor okay sit muscles okay so greater tubercle gives insertion to three muscles insertion to three muscles okay and what is the only muscle getting inserted into the lesser tubercle of the humerus lesser tubercle the only muscle is subscapularis isn't it yes subscapularis fine so all these four muscles okay the three muscles getting inserted into the greater tubercle and the only muscle getting inserted into the lesser tubercle all these muscles collectively called as six muscles s a t s six muscles the last s is representing the subscapularis okay six muscles which are getting inserted into the greater tubercle as well as lesser tubercle okay these four muscles are otherwise called as rotator cuff muscles because they provide support to the shoulder joint by right. okay fine so these four muscles which are getting inserted into the greater tubercle and lesser tubercle collectively called as rotator cuff muscles fine right. yes now let's talk about the three muscles which are inserted into the three muscles inserted into the intertubercular sulcus you know the location of intertubercular sulcus isn't it so right now i am marking the lateral lip of intertubercular sulcus this is the medial lip of intertubercular sulcus in between the two lips we have the floor of the intertubercular sulcus isn't it so what are the three muscles getting inserted into this three parts of the intertubercular sulcus just just now we have studied the three parts of intertubercular sulcus okay and the three muscles inserted into these three parts can be remembered as lady between lady between two majors okay lady between two majors the lady is representing the latissimus dorsi l for latissimus dorsi what are the two majors yes one is teres major another one is pectoralis major among these two major muscles teres major and the pectoralis major l for l you can easily remember okay pectoralis major is getting inserted into which lip l for l lateral lip okay so obviously the another major teres major is getting inserted into 
medial lip of the intertubercular sulcus okay so i hope you are clear about the three muscles which are getting inserted into the three parts of the intertubercular sulcus and remember the two contents of the intertubercular sulcus what are the two contents of intertubercular sulcus already we have studied the intertubercular sulcus is also called as bicipital groove isn't it why yes see this diagram this is the location of intertubercular sulcus this is the lateral lip this is the medial lip and in between we have the floor are you able to see one tendon will be passing through the through the intertubercular sulcus which tendon exactly tendon of bicep brachii specifically tendon of long head long head of bicep brachii okay along with the along with the synovial sheath which encloses it and are you able to see one branch of the anterior circumflex humeral artery this is the anterior circumflex humeral artery one branch called as ascending branch of the anterior circumflex humeral artery okay both these are the contents of the intertubercular sulcus as mentioned here tendon of long head of bicep brachii with the synovial sheath ascending branch of anterior circumflex humeral artery fine so i hope you are clear about the intertubercular sulcus otherwise called as bicipital groove the three muscles inserted and the two contents of intertubercular sulcus fine okay so yes just now we have studied the three muscles what is this muscle i am marking now yes this is the pectoralis major fine yes this is the teres major and in between these two majors this is the latissimus dorsi insertion fine yes let's move to the next diagram so this diagram is again again the anterior view of the humerus bone right humerus okay so i hope you this area is the middle of the shaft of humerus middle of the shaft of the humerus okay and in this diagram this is medial side this is lateral side okay fine so can you tell me the muscle which is getting inserted at the mid shaft of the humerus on the medial side okay at the middle of the shaft of the humerus on the medial side or uh, on the medial border of the middle of shaft of humerus which muscle is getting inserted this blue color yes this is coracobrachialis muscle insertion insertion of coracobrachialis muscle okay fine now at the same area that means at the middle of the shaft of humerus only but on the lateral aspect on the lateral aspect okay which muscle, muscle is getting inserted yes this is the deltoid tuberosity where the deltoid muscle is getting inserted this elevation here one v shaped elevation ridge will be there called as deltoid tuberosity which gives insertion to deltoid muscle isn't it fine on the lateral side so other muscles remember see here the muscle i am marking now is the origin of one muscle namely brachialis brachialis muscle okay so what is the exact site of origin of brachialis muscle yes brachialis muscle arises that is originates from which part of the humerus yes anterior aspect anterior aspect of which part of the humerus yes lower half of the shaft of humerus lower half of the shaft of humerus this whole muscle i am marking now is brachialis so from the lower half of the shaft of the humerus anteriorly we have the origin of brachialis fine yes now coming to the one bony landmark i am marking now any idea you should be able to answer yes this is the lateral epicondyle of humerus and this is the medial epicondyle of humerus which is actually more prominent medial epicondyle okay and please remember the medial epicondyle of humerus is otherwise called as common it is otherwise called as common flexor origin why it is called as common flexor origin yes it is also known as common flexor origin because it gives origin to origin to superficial superficial flexor muscles flexor muscles of forearm forearm okay 
the superficial flexor muscles of forearm they have common origin from the medial epicondyle that's why the medial epicondyle is called as common flexor origin fine similarly are you able to see this area the lateral epicondyle it is the lateral epicondyle is otherwise known as common extensor origin you can easily guess why it is called so yes the lateral epicondyle is called as common extensor origin because it gives common origin okay common origin to to extensor muscles of forearm extensor muscles of forearm fine yes now some other things we have to remember here okay i hope you will be knowing this is the posterior view of the humerus isn't it posterior view of the humerus okay so any idea about the area i am marking now between these two black lines what is the depression located in between these two lines yes there is one groove which is running obliquely downwards and laterally called as spiral groove otherwise called as radial groove isn't it so i want you to remember the two structures passing through the spiral groove otherwise called as radial groove in idea yes why it is called as radial groove because it allows the passage of radial nerve radial nerve okay along with one artery which artery yes profunda brachi artery otherwise profunda brachi vessels artery as well as vein both okay so please remember the two contents of the spiral groove or radial groove okay so just above okay just above the spiral groove are you able to see the origin of one muscle which muscle is this one yes origin of lateral head of triceps origin of lateral head of triceps so what is the site of origin of lateral head of triceps muscle lateral head of triceps or lateral head of triceps brachii yes it arises from the it arises from the posterior surface of humerus above the spiral groove isn't it posterior surface of humerus just above the spiral groove or radial groove whatever okay and are you able to see the origin of one muscle just below the spiral groove which muscle is this one yes this is the origin of medial head of triceps brachii medial head of triceps brachii fine okay so what is the site of origin of medial head of triceps brachii yes from the posterior surface of the humerus only but below the spiral groove isn't it posterior surface of humerus below the spiral groove fine below the spiral groove fine so i hope you are clear about the origin of the lateral head of triceps brachii and origin of medial head of triceps brachii isn't it fine now i hope you know this is the this is the lateral epicondyle otherwise called as common flexor origin this is the medial epicondyle otherwise called as common extensor origin and do you see one muscle i am marking now origin of which muscle is this one yes origin of one muscle of the back of forearm called as anconius so what is the site of origin of anconius yes it arises from the back that is posterior surface of what lateral epicondyle of humerus posterior surface of lateral epicondyle of humerus fine okay and and two more things we have to remember here okay just above fine just above the lateral epicondyle can you name the area i am marking in green color yes this is the lateral supracondylar ridge isn't it are you able to see the origin of two muscles from the lateral supracondylar ridge yes yes from the upper part of the lateral supracondylar ridge we have the origin of brachioradialis muscle brachioradialis muscle okay and from the lower part of the lower part of the lateral supracondylar ridge we have the origin of another muscle called as extensor carpi radialis longus so ecrl is representing it is the short form abbreviation of extensor carpi radialis longus fine 
simply called as ECRL muscle. Okay, fine. Similarly, right now I am marking the which area just above the medial epicondyle. Yes, this is called as medial supracondylar ridge. Do you see the origin of one muscle here? From the medial supracondylar ridge. Which muscle is this one? Yes, this is the origin of pronator teres. Pronator, pronator teres muscle. From the medial supracondylar ridge of humerus. Fine. Yes, this is about the attachments of various muscles, origin and insertion of various muscles in different parts of the humerus, isn't it? So let me talk about the applied aspects of the humerus. There, there are two important things, okay? One is, see this diagram, actually very, very, very important image you are seeing here, okay? So this diagram shows the three nerves which are in direct contact with the humerus bone. What are the three nerves which are in direct contact with the humerus bone? Yes, you, we can remember the three nerves as A, R, U in order. Okay. A, R, U. Okay. From above downwards. Axillary nerve, radial nerve, and ulnar nerve. Isn't it? Axillary nerve, radial nerve, ulnar nerve. Fine. And can you tell me the axillary nerve is related to which part of the humerus bone? Yes. Axillary nerve is related to surgical neck of humerus, isn't it? Surgical neck of humerus. Okay. What is the importance? Already we have studied. Yes. If there is fracture, okay. If there is fracture of surgical neck of humerus, which nerve may get injured? Obviously, axillary nerve may get injured. Okay. It may get injured, damaged. Okay. And can you tell me the Blood vessels related to the surgical neck. Nerve is axillary nerve. What are the two blood vessels related to the surgical neck? Yes, anterior circumflex humeral vessels and the posterior circumflex humeral vessels. They may also get damaged during the fracture of surgical neck. Okay. Now, following that, the another nerve, second nerve related to the humerus bone is radial nerve. Which part of the humerus is related to radial nerve? Exactly. It is related, the radial nerve is related to spiral groove, also known as radial groove, isn't it? Spiral groove or radial groove. What is the location of the spiral groove or radial groove? Yes, it is located at the middle of the shaft of the humerus. Which aspect? Anterior or posterior? Exactly. Posterior aspect of the middle of the shaft of the humerus. Okay. So, what is the importance? Obviously, if there is fracture of the middle shaft middle of the shaft of humerus obviously which nerve will get injured yes it is radial nerve and can you tell me the artery or blood vessel related to the radial groove yes yes it is profunda profunda brachy vessels fine yes and finally the another nerve one more nerve one more nerve related to the humerus to the lower part of the humerus the medial epicondyle of the humerus is ulnar nerve. So ulnar nerve is related to medial epicondyle. Okay. It is related to the posterior aspect of the medial epicondyle. Okay. So obviously, if there is fracture of the medial epicondyle of the humerus, ulnar nerve will get injured. Isn't it? Fine. So take care of this diagram, which is very, very important. That's the end of the discussion attachments and the applied aspect of the humerus. Thank you all.